Hello Libra. Welcome to your tarot reading here on Dove and Serpent Tarot. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, and consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. This is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I provide. And remember that the most important part of any tarot reading, Libra, is you. And there, there's a Prince of Cups. Let's put that into some context, all right? We're gonna use our Dove and Serpent spread, and as I lay these cards out, I would also like to say that if there is anything you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know in the comments. Okay, we're going to finish up with the Path of the Serpent. Very interesting here. This is going to be a fun one. We're going to do a mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. We're going to use the Handel Tarot deck. This was an early Father's Day gift from my wife and daughter. I literally just opened this card up, uh, opened up this deck today, so I haven't really had a chance to connect or to use the deck very much, but already I feel it has a, a tremendous power to it and I'm really enjoying it. We're going to put this card over here. We're going to put the lizard on top to keep an eye on things. And we're not going to look at that card until the very end and hopefully it will tie everything together and give us the confirmation we need. Okay. And I do have to apologize for my voice. Um, the more I talk, the worse it gets. So I'm trying to talk a little softly today. Um, this might be a little bit of an ASMR style reading, uh, just so I can make it through, you know. Um, the first card now, we've got this, we've got this Prince of Cups. And I think that right now you are in a, you're in kind of a limbo, right? I feel like you are trying to, trying to figure out how to bring two sides of yourself together, almost, right? It's kind of, um, see, we've got, let's, let's go through these cards here. We've got the Major Arcana. We've got some good Majors here. We have some of this challenging air energy. We've got a lot of kind of a wheel, circular looking cards, right? Like the Fortune card. We've got the Four of Wands, even on this Devil energy, and even on this Eight of Discs. It seems like, it seems like we're trying to figure out a way to really like square the circle. You know, and what I what I mean by that is, I feel like there are kind of two sides to you right now, and well, you're Libra, so kind of makes sense. I feel like one side of you really wants to stick with what you know is working, stick with what is kind of safe and stable and steady and predictable, comfortable, familiar. Another side of you wants to let all of this creative energy out, wants to just, you know, um, there, there's this spirit, this part of you that just wants to burst forth, you know, like the, like the Aliens movie. Um, just wants to kind of get out there and do these new things and just have full expression. It's just like there's like a Jekyll and Hyde kind of thing. I forget which is which, but the one just wants to keep things as they are. Let's stay safe. Let's stay stable. Let's not do anything crazy. Let's just, let's do what works. It's comfortable. It's familiar, right? It's predictable. Man, there's this other side of you, this fool energy that wants to just take risks, wants to surprise everyone, but surprise yourself. You want to like, just see what you could do with all of this energy. This, I think it's a very ambitious, very creative energy, but it's just kind of, um, it's still like unmanifest. It's just, it's ready to go, but there's this reluctance to let it out. You know, so there's these, these two sides to you. And I think what we really want, what we're kind of itching for, we have this wanderlust, right? We've kind of got like this travel bug in us and it, we just really want to break out of this comfortable, familiar place that we're in and just run in every direction at once, you know? Um, this is an intense uh, thirst 
and curiosity, the sense of wonder, the sense of, of adventure, like we need that. But the other part of you says, hmm, let's just stay safe. Things have been working, right? It's comfortable, it's familiar, it's predictable. But this fool is some energy that's really tough to beat. The fool, it's, this fool energy is kind of infectious, you know? It kind of, um, the fool really is, is so influential that anyone that they talk to, they kind of are building a following behind them, right? They're just kind of dancing around the universe and pretty soon there's a whole conga line behind them. You know what I mean? So it's really hard for you to resist this energy. It's calling to you. It's the, the, the pan pipe, right? And everybody just kind of wakes up out of the sleepy wilderness and wants to follow this pan pipe. You know, see where the music is taking them. Not even really caring where the music is taking them, but just wants to dance on this unknown, unpredictable journey around the cosmos. So I feel like there is that intensity in you, and that's the... The Prince of Cups is trying to figure out, especially now we've got more air with the air of water and we've got this air here trying to sort it out. You've got that feeling in you. It's the it's some water energy. You're trying to sort out that feeling that you have, that kind of that desire that's just kind of ready to burst forward from you. And we're trying to sort it out. Four of swords. We're trying to be rational. Let's be reasonable. Let's take this circle, right? The fool energy is kind of the infinite circle. We've got the wheel of fortune, which is kind of another infinite circle. We've got the four of wands, which is a bit of a circle too. We want to take this circular energy. We want to square it off with, the, with our reason, with our mind. We want to put limits on it. We want to contain it. We want to build a system around it. We want to take it and make it something comfortable, familiar, predictable. That's what the mind does. That's what the mind is trying to do with this infinite spiritual energy, this really expansive air energy, expansive fire energy with the four of wands. We're trying to give it form, give it structure, but that limits it, right? The fool is kind of, this, is, this, this energy is unlimited. The spiritual fire is unlimited. So how do we take something infinite and build walls around it? Well, then it's not infinite anymore. Then we've taken something spiritual and we've brought it down to this physical manifested plane, which usually is a very good thing, right? And we can see some of that here maybe is, is kind of the way to go with this. Maybe it's not an either or. Maybe it's not about staying where you're comfortable, sticking with what's predictable, what's familiar. Maybe it is not either, not about going completely the other extreme and just literally um, just getting up and running in every direction all at once. So maybe it's a little bit of the fool energy, but it's a little bit of this air structure energy, a little bit of this form, right? Um, let's go to the recent past, this 10. or this It's the 10th mystery of the tarot. It's the Wheel of Fortune. I always think of it as the 10. Um, <clears throat> the Wheel of Fortune, the 10th mystery of the tarot. Now, it is the number 10, and 10 represents the return to unity, but on a lower rung, right? We're back to the unity. We're back to um, everything being one, but now it's manifested. So that's what the Wheel of Fortune does. It takes the spiritual energy, finds a way to give it to you in a practical way. It's Jupiter. It's fortune. It's all of this infinite stuff. Here's your piece of it. Here's your piece of the infinite. Well, it's not infinite anymore because you have a piece of it. But that's what Jupiter does. That's what the Wheel of Fortune does. And just as easily as it could take a piece of the infinite and give it to you, it could take that piece back and stick it back to the infinite. Because really, there's no difference between the between. There's no piece of the infinite. It's, it, it's just 
infinite. It's just spirit, right? And that's kind of maybe a key to looking at this, not looking at it like we are limiting ourselves by this mental energy, by this four of swords, not trying to box ourselves in, right? Not trying to build walls around us, not trying to take a piece of this fool energy and stick it into something that is already comfortable and familiar and predictable. Not trying to take the infinite and put it in a little box for us to use, but recognizing that it is all part of the same energy. It is all infinite. It is all spirit. What we can do with this air energy, with this sword's energy primarily, is take a lesson from the Wheel of Fortune. We can take a little piece of the infinite and bring it into our lives. And it doesn't have to be limiting. It doesn't have to be restricting. It doesn't have to feel like we've just kind of... Um, like we've decimated the spirit or the infinite, that we have somehow broken a chunk off of God and we are holding on to it in our little shoebox. Because we can't do that. It doesn't work that way. Infinite is infinite. Matter and energy are interchangeable. It's all part of one substance, which is, I don't know. I don't know what it is. But I think that the lesson from the Wheel of Fortune is important right now because it, we maybe shouldn't be looking at this like it's either it's either the infinite or it's the finite the mundane right we shouldn't look at it as being well it's either god goddess deity spirit or it's earth and manifestation and physical substance i think the lesson from the wheel of fortune is that we can take that unity and we can manifest it in a way that is somewhat familiar to us, somewhat predictable, right? We bring things down to this manifested realm and we kind of know what is going to happen, right? I know that if I if I throw this, um, this orb up into the air, that it's going to come back down and probably break something, you know? I know that when I pick it up, it's going to have some kind of weight to it. You know, I know that if I expel enough air towards these candles that the flame is going to go out. I don't know where it goes. This is my, this fire is a little piece of the infinite that I've now given, used my four of swords to give it form. Now, I didn't make the candle, but I understand how, take a lighter, a match, light it, and there, you know, there's the fire. I didn't take a piece of the infinite. I didn't break a piece of God off and stick it here. I didn't take the universal fire and just break a little piece off. No, this is the infinite. This is the universal fire. I just found a way to bring it to my perception so that I can see it and I can experience it. My cat agrees with me. She's very supportive, that one. So anyway, uh, the fortune energy, the wheel of fortune, I think is a good lesson for us. Now, I also think that this card's in the recent past because I think you've had some very good luck recently. You've had the kind of experience in your life that is comfortable and familiar and predictable, but it seems like it's really working out for you. But yet you have this impulse to kind of break away and do something completely like a complete 180 or just this kind of infinite fool energy. Right? That may seem, for all intents and purposes, a little foolish. You've got this good thing working for you. You've got a successful life, a, a steady business, whatever it is. So why would you risk that for this kind of unknown adventure? You know. Well, I think that's the dilemma that we all kind of feel, especially maybe when we do achieve some sort of success, whether that's a restoration of our health, whether we've had some good fortune in love or in business. Um, we kind of want the next adventure. We don't want things to get too stale, you know? Um, my cat, I think, she wants her own YouTube channel. So I don't know what, what she could do, but... Uh, she is a hairless cat, a sphinx cat. I don't know if you know that. Anyway, um, 
Let's go with this four of wands down here because this is kind of, this is taking the fire, like I just kind of said, taking the fire from the infinite, right? Spiritual fire. Where is it right now? I don't know. I can't perceive it. I know it's here. I know that if I did certain things with my fingers and with these tools that I could create it in the candle. You gotta be careful with fire. It's dangerous. But what I've done is like this four of wands. I've completed an act of magic, and it may seem pretty silly, but I've taken this universal spiritual philosophic fire, and I've given it physical form. I've manifested it. I've taken the fire, and I've, I've put it in this circle. I've taken the circle, and I've squared it. I've, this is what we're talking about, taking that infinite unknown and giving it a form, putting it somewhere where I can now see it and we can experience it, we can work with it, we can enjoy it, right? We can use it for something productive, we can enhance our lives with it in a practical way, you know? It's not just a parlor trick, this candle well, it provides a little bit of heat, sometimes it gets cold down here. It provides a little bit of extra light, a little bit of uh, ambiance for the channel, you know, it has a purpose. It's fun to look at. But there, there's a lot of ways that you can do this. Not just with a candle, but that's just... It's a symbol, just like this Four of Wands is a symbol of how we take that creative fire, that spiritual kind of unknown, uh, unpredictable, completely completely opposite of what we're, what we're used to, what we're talking about. And we give it a little bit of structure. We give it a temporary home, right? We're just, we're inviting the infinite in just to have tea with us for a little while. And then it can do its thing. Then it, it disappears from our perception. Doesn't mean it's gone. Doesn't mean that it was ever broken off of God or, you know, we took a chip from the the infinite. That's why I don't really subscribe to this idea that we, we all contain a spark of God or goddess deity of spirit. You know, I don't think that we're sparks. I think that we are all the same fire, just we're all different candles, you know, but the fire is the same. The flame is the same. As my daughter would say, hey, that rhymes. Anyway, getting off track a little bit. We, um, we can do this. We can find a way to kind of have both this, both of these wheels, the infinite and the manifested, kind of coming together in this four of wands kind of energy, which I think it's beneath the surface here because you kind of know that. I think maybe you're like in kind of a, an outward or, or more conscious way. It seems like two separate paths. Right? It seems like an either or. There's a false dichotomy here. Because in reality, we've got these two. And these two, basically the same card. This is the art or temperance card. I think in this case, it's more art than temperance. It's the art of blending together. It's the art of taking all of the materials around you. It's the art of taking both of these seemingly separate paths and blending them into one, taking the fire down, building a campfire around it, right? That's the, the fire that the alchemists use to heat the, um, you know, the, the flask, you know, or the crucible. That is the, you know, the oven that we cook our ideas in. And, you know, every... Every time you cook something in an oven, right? My wife bakes a lot. She's a wonderful cook. There's different ingredients. Put them all together, cook it. It's going to come out tasting very different than any single one of those ingredients. Some experts, you know, chefs, people with decent palates, can taste all of those individual components. But the overall dish is something that transcends the components. I know we're getting a little abstract. We're getting a little philosophical here. I don't mean to do that. Let's get back on track, okay? 
I think that you're trying to find a way to blend these two impulses together. I think that you're ready for adventure. You're ready for change. You're ready for this new kind of energy that's bursting forth. You want to be surprised. You want to surprise others. You want to have adventure. You don't want to just be stuck in the mundane routine, predictable, familiar, comfortable. You want adventure. You want some of this fool energy. You want to hear the pan pipes. Maybe you already do. Now you want to go out in search of pan. I think that's what's going on here. Um, in order to do that, we have to shatter our preconceived notions about what is real, about what is uh, what we expect, about what we deserve, about what we think is our lot in life. These ten swords represent you shattering this prison of your own thought, thinking that you are imprisoning spirit by by giving it some kind of organization, right? By giving it some kind of campfire by building a ring for it or or building the oven for it or um you know building the machine for the ghost to live in right we have to we have to overcome that we have to really divorce ourselves from this idea that we can contain spirit that we can build a box around it that we can cage it somehow i know you don't want to do that you don't want to cage it and that's why Part of us feels like it's an either-or choice. We're thinking about it all wrong. So we have to get over that. Right? We have to stop thinking that we, um, that we can control or contain this. All we can do is hope to give it um, a little bit of structure and expression through our own lives, our own activities, our own minds, thoughts, feelings, right? our own bodies, our own energies. And not feeling like we, um, we have to stick to what is familiar, right? So these are all the preconceived notions. These are all the things that you thought you knew or believed about yourself, about what you deserved, about what you were capable of, about what, um, what you allow yourself to do or believe or feel. You have to get rid of all of this kind of negative thinking, all of this restrictive thinking. And the next card is this devil energy. So the devil energy really is a latent potency. This is potential energy. This is your ambition. This is your endurance. You're ready to climb this creative mountain. You're ready to, um, you know, to follow pan, follow the pan pipe through the wilderness. You don't know where it's going to go. But you're ready to do that. You're physically, energetically ready for this. This is the the creative energy that's in your environment that is your greatest asset right now. When you break down this these mental barriers, these mental restrictions, you really are letting this goat out of the uh, the pen, the goat house, um, to really want, run wild. And now the goat really just wants to climb up. For some reason, goats love steep mountains, I guess. I don't know. So the steeper, the better, the more, the more kind of um, divergent, the more outrageous, the better, the more shocking and surprising to you, the better, right? You want something really inspiring. You want it to be a real challenge because the steeper the mountain, the faster you get to the top, it's going to be difficult, but the view is going to be so much better from up there. And that's where you're really going to experience this air and, and realize that it's been with you all along. It's not something that you have to, again, break a chip off and, and um, you're somehow doing a disservice to it, somehow defiling it by giving it form or giving it structure about having a plan, wrapping a plan around it. It's still infinite. It's still spirit. It's still creativity. It's still this unlimited fire. Now it's being expressed through your creative ambitions. Okay. And this is really, this is a very interesting reading. I, I don't know what it is that you are considering doing, or I don't know what you're doing now or what you want to do. I just know that this fool energy is very powerful in you right now. Very powerful. Um, <clears throat> the eight of discs. This is what we don't want. It's in the position of what we don't want. Why don't we want this? This is delicate, cautious, prudent. This is attention to details. 
this should be good, right? This is that careful, calculated work. This is probably unwanted because this is so much unlike the fool energy. This is very careful, very thoughtful, attentive to deep meticulous. The fool's just running wild all around. This is you uh, trying to grow the garden one leaf at a time, slowly, carefully, delicately. And the fool just comes in with his goat and just tramples over all of your plants, just is doing circles and spinning and dancing and jumping and doing acrobatics all through your tomatoes. And that's the difference between the kind of energies that I'm feeling with you right now. And that, that's why I think that there's this, this false dichotomy, this idea that there are these two choices. So we don't want this kind of structure and carefulness. We don't want things to be so predictable. We don't want to know that if I give you two drops of water, you're going to grow, you know, two billion more cells by tomorrow. We don't want to have, we don't want it to be math, right? We don't want it to be so organized. We want just life and life is chaos sometimes. That's what we want. So I understand why this might be in the position of kind of what we're not after. We don't want that exactly. We may need a little bit of it, but that's kind of what we're trying to avoid, right? The next card is the Princess of Cups. Now we started with the Prince of Cups. It feels like a long time ago. We started with the Prince of Cups. Now we kind of end up with the Princess of Cups. So it's almost like the energy is is crystallizing more, this water energy, this, this desire, this striving, this longing almost for this kind of freedom. I think now you're starting to manifest that. You're getting a taste of it. You're, you're, you're utilizing it a little bit. You're dipping your toe in the waters of freedom kind of thing. You know, not to be too cliche here, but you're doing it. You're starting to do it. You're getting your sea legs kind of you know, and I think it, I think it's a bit of a satisfaction of that longing. Not quite though. I feel like it's more that now you've, you've understood that longing that the Prince of Cups is trying to figure it out, right? It's the air of water, trying to figure out that water, that longing. The princess is the crystallization of that. I think now it's solid. You, you know, you understand, you can see it for what it is. You can accurately perceive that longing, right? So you've accomplished that. Now we've got to work our way from this princess of cups. We've got to work our way into the fire energy. Now you fully recognize this longing and what it is and what it means. Now we need to start doing something with that knowledge. And that takes us to the mystery card. Thank you, Lizard, for keeping an eye on that card. Um, hopefully this will be some good fire energy. You know, I think uh, we had some good fire already. You know, the art or temperance, that's fire. Four of wands, that's fire. But maybe something else. Maybe the Eon or judgment card. Maybe the emperor even. Well, we've got the King of Wands, this is the Father of Wands. It's the Knight of Wands in the, the Thoth deck. So this is really, this is fire on fire, right? And this is that, this is the creation that, uh, it's interesting that this card is, uh, kind of depicts uh, Brahma, because it's the idea that um, Brahman and the Atman are not, two separate things. It's not a piece. It's not a divine spark. It is the divine, right? Atman is Brahman. It is um, not a, a chunk of God that we've taken and kind of scurried off with like a little mouse or something or a, a cat. Um, they are the same. They are identical. There is no, there's no split. It's not possible to break a chunk off of that. So this is also the kind of illusion that we're creating for ourselves, the illusion that we've taken a piece of the divine and, and 
put it into a campfire. It, the illusion that I'm perceiving is that I've taken fire and I've put it in this candle. That I've taken a piece of spirit, of the spiritual fire, and I've put it in this candle. I'm so sneaky. But that's an illusion. That's Brahma. That's not, that's not what I did at all. But that's my perception of things. You know, some of these candles are going out, I think. They're returning to spirit. So anyway, I like this because this is showing one that it's we're we're fooling ourselves. It is an illusion that we we take this spirit and we put it into something material, right? That we give it form or that we take a, a break a piece off that we have a divine spark that we can put into something else. Then that just means that the divine, that spirit is literally just broken up into billions and billions of little pieces and that doesn't seem right. <clears throat> and this is also that fire energy that we said the Princess of Cups now needs to enter into. You've understood the longing, right? You have the knowledge of what that longing is. Now we need to start utilizing it. Now you need to start creating this illusion. Create the uh, whatever your adventure is. Create whatever your life is. By, you know, in this kind of uh, illusory way, take a piece of the divine and stick it into this campfire, right? Stick it into the oven and use it and do it and, and create what you want to create. Have the adventure, have the fool energy that you want built into your life in whatever way you can, whatever way you choose. All the while knowing that you're not really taking a piece of the divine. It's all spirit, right? But we create this illusion. Why? I don't know. I think that's just what it means to uh, have consciousness, right? I think I don't. I don't want to get too too philosophical about it. We could talk about it another time. Uh, I think we should take a look at the extended. If you'd like to join me, click on the link right here. You can have access to all of the extended readings, not just for Libra, but for all of the zodiac signs. I want to thank you so much for being here. This was this was a fun reading really enjoyed this. I hope you did as well. Leave me some comments. Um, subscribe if you haven't yet, and please share the video with your friends on social media or, or whatever you can do. That really helps out the channel. I appreciate you so much. Thank you again for letting me read for you.